Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to a special edition of First Cup. I'm pre-recording this, as you can tell, and I thought I would give you a tour of the gardens around my house. It's something that brings me a lot of joy, something we've talked about on the show, and so here we go. Let's go for a walk. So the first thing you'll see here, most of these plants are house plants. Everything here ends up inside over the winter. Now, that's quite a few plants, and including some of these guys over here, and these guys. And I'm going to need to find some homes for some of them because there are far too many. We've got everything from spider plants to stevia to jades, aloe, philodendrons, ferns, and more. These are all really easy to grow inside. The aloe is really unhappy outside this summer for some strange reason, but everybody else has done pretty well. And then over here, we've got a number of plants that I grew for food. We've got some jalapenos, some tomatoes that are growing up from the ground, basil, some kind of bug on the basil there. Uh, what else do we have? Cilantro. This is actually a, a, a banana that I got this year. And in theory, it'll grow a few feet and be happy in this pot and give me bananas in a couple years. These are red maples that I started growing from seed off of this red maple, which is massive, it's a beautiful tree, and I even tapped it for maple syrup this year. The potatoes are dying back, which means they're about ready. It's time to, to really dig into those and see what's going on there, see if we ended up with anything. I tried growing beets in the same sort of bags and they did not work at all. So underneath this red maple, this is called comfrey. Comfrey is a wonderful plant, great medicinal, really tasty, and uh, really nutritious. It's a big lilac that when it's in bloom, utterly amazing smell. Just one of my favorite smells from my childhood and, and still to today. This rose has been here since I bought the place and here we've got ground cherries and cherry tomatoes and jalapenos and peas. If you follow me personally on Facebook, you know that the squirrel, the, wood, the chipmunk, did a number on my peas. It looks like I do have some He'll be able to get back, but uh, he ate most of them. So he was relocated. And I mean that genuinely. He was relocated. I didn't kill him. Another big red maple. And then you can see my property line there with my neighbors. Those were more lilacs. Got some peonies. I'm not going to go too close because there's a hornet's nest I have to deal with. The brown wasp nest. Uh, we got some raspberries down by the road. A rhododendron. More peonies. And just behind that lilac are some hazelnuts and that hedge, just the second one you can see, those are chestnuts. And those might have something worth eating this year. The hazelnuts have done pretty well. Let's see, what else do we have? So if we go for a walk, we've got another comfrey, we've got some, some thyme, some sage. This does really well here. This is a uh, spicy oregano. It's great in anything pasta. In fact, I think I'm gonna make some pizza tonight. Echinacea, also called red cone flower. And these are my grapes. I'm pretty far north. Most people can't grow grapes here, but you can see how much sun they get. And they're doing really well. I think this is gonna be the third year of getting grapes off them. I've gotta do something about these guys. They're killing the leaves. But you can see there are plenty of grapes in here. And I'm going to pull dozens and dozens of pounds off. Tomatillos. Those haven't done so well this year, but hopefully, because, you know, the year's not over, we'll get something. Hmm, what's going on here? There's been quite a few bugs. This is a new plant for me this year, Jerusalem artichoke. So, um, this is head level. Uh, the top of that is eight foot, 
eight and a half feet. So that would suggest that the tubers down there are doing really well. Uh, asparagus. This is the first year I've had any asparagus that I get to eat. That's been pretty fun. Got some, been trying out some new seeds in here and I see some maybe butternut squash, lots of kale in there. Pumpkins, the pumpkins are doing okay. We'll see if, how big they get. Uh, finally found a pumpkin that the bugs didn't murder. Those are eggplant. I don't know if those are actually gonna do anything. Oh, hey, that pumpkin popped up in, uh, I'd say the last 48 hours. Oh, there's another one over there. Cool. I think we found our pumpkin. One of the things that's hard about gardening is figuring out what seeds are going to do best in your soil. So what do we got over here? Well, we've got my, my trash cans. If you're a longtime follower of uh, First Cup, you know the saga of the trash cans that i got to put away. These raspberries. This is the first year I've really had raspberries that I can eat. Where's one? Oh, come on. I thought I saw one. Is that one ready? Yeah, I'm gonna eat that. When we talk about the warehouse, that's the warehouse. Uh, the top floor, if I finished it up right, would make a great home training space. Pear tree. Pears are doing all right this year. Got two of them. These fruit trees were here. Pretty lucky. And this is an apple tree. This is an off year for apples. I've had a couple. It's an early yellow firm flesh apple. It's not like a golden delicious. If you've had those, those are not my favorite at all. And these are wild blackberries, which are doing pretty well. What's better than food that you can grow and then eat? Oh, that's a hole. Hope I'm not giving anybody uh, seasickness here. Um, I noticed these as I was cleaning some stuff out. I don't know if you can see, there's grapes there. I didn't plant these. My guess is a bird ate some seed. And there's the grape one. So that's kind of neat. What else we got? These are just some wild berry bushes that the birds eat. Nothing that is human edible. Birch trees that I have, that I tapped this year. Got some, made some birch syrup which was pretty tasty. Took a lot of work. These are all apple trees on the back line. You can see, I uh, just cut the grass yesterday. I didn't, uh, my friend Tyler did. This is one of my favorite things. It's a blueberry bush. This thing was here when I moved in. Uh, just pulled off, let's see, uh, about, almost a gallon of blueberries. I could probably do that much again. Might do that tonight. And you can see over there I got some plants. Um, some palms, spiders, rubber tree plant, avocado. <clears throat> see if we got any apples going on over here. Oh, well, we do have some, so the deer will have something to munch on. It's not a great apple year, but this is kind of a cool spot you can see underneath. I, I keep everything above my head. Oh, you see the bird that just flew through there? And uh, there's another well with a pitcher pump that I gotta fix at some point. It doesn't, doesn't work right. It's not quite a good seal. You've heard me talk about the woodchuck. This is where the woodchuck lives. Somewhere in here doing his thing. You can see sort of a mainline tunnel right there centered. 
That, that's that one of the ways he gets in. And where's the other one? There's the other one. There's another one right there, you can see. More apples. There's another view of the, the lilacs. And somebody gave me some some uh, hostas that looks like uh, got whacked a bit in the, in the mowing. Uh, rose and some cool flower. Oh, this nettle doesn't need to be here. The nettles have taken over this year, which is not cool because those things hurt when you touch them. There's the other red maple. That finishes the tour. All right, let's try this again. I forgot to hit record. Ah, this is the hard part about making videos. Oh, two hummingbirds were just right there, uh, three feet away. Maybe, maybe you'll be able to see them. If you're watching this, uh, this is going up on Friday. I'm recording it on Wednesday evening, preparing for this few days away. The place I'm going doesn't have Wi-Fi. If it did, I would probably be doing a show. And I want to thank you for watching, for tuning in. Now, why did I show you the gardens? Well, because some of you have asked. But also, what, gardenings, what does gardening and martial arts have in common? It's a direct... The results are a direct reflection of your effort. Now, it's not quite as strongly correlated as martial arts. Martial arts gives back exactly and only what you put in. Gardening doesn't always work out that way. Those tomatillas I showed you last year... I would have had, the, the branches would have been breaking off from how much fruit was on there. I've got one that has produced, I think, six. The others have almost nothing. Most of them have nothing. Sometimes it works that way. So what do we do about that? We grow a bunch of different stuff. And we do the same thing with martial arts. You work on forms and sparring and self-defense. And sometimes you have a breakthrough with your stances. Or sometimes it's your breathing or maybe a particular technique. And the more diverse that we are with our training, the better we get and the better we feel. Because we're more likely to feel like we're getting something out of it. If the only thing you work on takes years to have a breakthrough, to have some progress, it's likely you're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel defeated. So don't put yourself in that place. Work on different things at different times with different people. Be diverse with your training and you're more likely to have uh, at least one crop that produces for you. Thanks again for watching. Hope you have a great day. Great weekend. I will be back live on Monday. So take care, everybody. Peace.